Hi guys, if you are planning to come to Israel, the Judean Desert, Masada and Gedi, the Dead Sea should definitely be a part of your itinerary. Now, the two most important places in the Judean Desert that will be on every 10 must-see places list are Masada and the Dead Sea. But the Judean Desert has a lot more to offer. And in this video, I'm going to talk about all the important things you need to know when visiting the Judean Desert. Now, I love the desert and I recommend sleeping here. And I've done another video about the best hotels and hostels in the Judean Desert. But if you are short on time or it is summer and it is really, really hot, then there are also day tours to the Judean Desert from Jerusalem and I've also did a video and wrote a post about that so you can check it out I will leave the link down here below now the best way to see the Judean desert is with a car and you can hire a car in Jerusalem there are also buses 486 and 487 that leave Jerusalem every hour and stop at the main sites now I will mention Jerusalem quite a lot in this video because of two reasons the first one is that it is the closest biggest city the second reason, which is much more important, is that there is a 3,000 years old connection between the history, the human history of the Judean Desert and Jerusalem, and I will talk about it in a couple of minutes. The most important site in the Judean Desert is the Dead Sea, which is 10 times saltier than the ocean, and this is also why you float. Now, it is so salty because the Dead Sea is also the lowest place on Earth, 400 meters below sea level and there used to be here an ancient sea and the water evaporated and the salt stayed. Now the Dead Sea is long, 50 kilometers long and you will see it as you ride on road 90 which is basically the only road in the Judean desert that goes from the north to the south. Now you will see the Dead Sea but don't stop the car and just go in wherever you want. This is because of the sinkholes. The biggest environmental disaster in Israel is that the Dead Sea is basically dying. Every year, the Dead Sea loses one meter in height. And what happens is that under the ground, the sweet water washes the salt and the earth collapses into these sinkholes. And it is really dangerous, so you should only go to beaches where it is allowed. At the northern part, which is closer to Jerusalem, there are some beaches, Kalia Beach and Gedi and others. But I like to recommend the ones that are at the southern part, at the hotel area of En Bokek and Neve Zohar. It's about an hour and a half from Jerusalem, 15 minutes south of uh, Mesada and half an hour south of and Gedi. Now the beaches there are free, but the only thing you need to be aware of is that um, you need to pay parking. You will get a parking ticket sooner in the Dead Sea than in Tel Aviv. So buy the ticket. Now swimming or better say floating in the Dead Sea is really healthy. It is full of minerals, but don't go in with jewelry. And if you have any medical problem, then talk to the lifeguard. Yes, there are lifeguards in the Dead Sea, although you float. The biggest danger is to drink the water. Just don't do that. Don't drink the water. Mesada is the most visited paid site in Israel and for a good reason. It is an isolated mountain with an interesting history. Now there are a couple of ways to get to Mesada. Um, most of the visitors come from the east, from the side of the Dead Sea. Over there you have the cable car that can take you up and the museum. And there is another entrance from the west side of Mesada. This is if you come from the side of Arad. If you want to go up, you can or take the cable card or walk up the snake path, which will take you about 45 minutes. And it is a descent of 350 meters. I like to say that in Mesada, there are two stories and another one. The first one is the story of King Herod, that on the top of the plateau built two palaces and spa right in the middle of the desert. The second story is the story of the rebels that 70 years later took over this palace and made it into a fortress. And from here they fought the last battle against the Romans in the first Jewish-Roman war. The extra story of Mesada is Mesada as a symbol. Mesada is not only an archaeological site. For Jews that came to Israel in the last 100 years. Mesada was a symbol for the Jew that fight till the end. And in my 
Judean Desert booklet, I've written quite a lot about Mesada. I've also added a trails that go around Mesada, uh, up here to Mount El Azar, where I'm sitting right now. And I really love this place. In Mesada now, there are thousands of people and I'm right here seeing Mesada by myself. I will only say that it is only for very good hikers. If it is hot, then do not try to go around Mesada. There is no shade. Now, if you go up the snake path, and something happens to you, somebody will come to you in a minute. If something will happen to you when you go around Mesada, um, nobody will find you for a long time. So if you do want to do it, talk to the rangers in the visitor centers before. Now it takes about three hours to visit Mesada and if you want to go around Mesada, um, then add another two hours. But again, it is only for fit hikers and do not do it in summer. In Mesada, the story of Herod and the rebels is very dramatic, but also very, very short. In Engedi, people live for 6,000 years, and this is because the water. Two spring-fed streams with drinking water run year-round, Nachal David and Nachal Arugot. And a visit to Engedi combines history. There is an ancient 6,000 years old temple, beautiful synagogue with a mosaic floor, and there are plants that come originally from Africa. And there are animals over there, and you get to see the ibex and the rock hyrax. Most visitors to Engedi come for two or three hours or so, but if you like hiking, then there are also long hikes, like 15 kilometers or more. And when you enter, then you get a map and you can see all the options. You can also see the map on the internet um, before, and I will leave a link down here. Now, for the long hikes, you have to start early in the morning, around 8, 9. The rangers will not let you start um, afterwards because it takes a lot of time, and you shouldn't do it on the hot summer days, but it is, if you like hiking, it is a great option. Qumran is a small archaeological site, and I like to say that Qumran is the most important, not impressive site in the world. If you look at Qumran, most of what you see is not impressive, but in order to understand Qumran, you need to look at the cliffs all around you and know the history of the place. In caves on the cliffs around Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. This is by far the most important archaeological finding in Israel. 900 scrolls were found, about one-third, 300 are parts of the Bible, another 300 are books that didn't become holy, didn't become part of the Bible, external books, and one-third are writing of a sect that lived, or maybe not, in Qumran. In order to understand why it is so important, you need to go 2,000 years back to the time of the Second Temple. Now, Israel is rich of history. Sometimes I say it is too interesting, but there is one period of time that you will hear time and time again, and this is the time of the Second Temple or the end of the Second Temple. And the reason that you hear so much about it is that very important things happen in that time. I like to say that two religions um, started at that time. First of all, um, Christianity, this is the time of Jesus, and also Judaism. Now, Judaism is of course older, 1,000 years older, but for the first 1,000 years, Judaism was a temple-based religion. The temple in Jerusalem was the most important place. The priest sacrificed animals. The Jews had to come to the temple three times a year. And when the temple was destroyed, when the Jews rebelled in the year 70, basically Judaism changed. And so today, synagogues are like a small temple and the prayers are instead of the sacrifices. So I like to say that Judaism, as we know it today, and Christianity started at the same time, at the end of the Second Temple. Now I'm talking about it here in Qumran, because at the end of the Second Temple, Jews were divided between themselves in many different groups. And here in Qumran, probably, we don't know for sure, lived a group that is called the Essenes, and they had a very big influence on John the Baptist and maybe Jesus himself. So if you want to understand the basic of Christianity and the Western world values, what we think about sin, redemption, end of the world, you need to go back to that time. 
Now in my Judean desert booklet, I didn't write about Qumran. I focused on Masada and Gedi. But um, if you want to come to Qumran, I recommend it. But just read about the site before you come. This is also the story of the many monasteries and churches that you will see in the Judean desert. Marsaba, St. George, the church in Masada, Dir Hijla. Christianity was an illegal religion for 300 years under Roman rules, and believers were persecuted. In the fourth century, the Romans started to change their view on Christianity, and gradually it became to be a legal religion, and eventually the religion of the Roman emperor. Many devoted Christians didn't like that Christianity started to be connected to money and political power, and they wanted to live a simple life like Jesus. So hermits started to come to the Judean desert and live here in very simple life in caves and some of them met once a week and this is how most of the monasteries in the Judean desert started in the Byzantine time in the fourth century and today most of them if not all of them belong to the Eastern Church. That's it guys until now I talked about the sites that you can see and a little bit maybe a little bit too much about the history. Now I will say two things that I don't like in the Judean desert. First of all, there are no good places to eat. At the area of the hotels, there are some small places, but there are no really good places to eat. And the second thing that I don't like is that the area of the hotels is um, not really nice. I mean, the hotels themselves are good, and I did a video about um, the Dead Sea hotels, but between the hotels, it is not really clean, it's not really nice. Now, this is one of the most unique places in the world, minus 400 meters below sea level, um, really, really special place. It should have been 10 times nicer. Um, anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and if you are planning to come to the Judean Desert, then consider buying my Judean Desert booklet. It is in English and in German, and you can download it as an ebook. Um, see you in the next video. If you have any questions, then please write them down here below, and bye for now.